Welcome to the Speaking Light into Abortion podcast, where I talk about all the reasons it's possible for you to thrive after your abortion. I'm your host, Amanda Kingsley, and two years after my own abortion, I certified as a life coach so I could serve women after abortion in all the ways they've been deserving and lacking for centuries. Consider this your launch pad for finding strength and community in yourselves and in each other. I'm wondering if my voice sounds different when it's just going to be me. (laughs) I kind of have different energy when there's a guest on to join us that I'm ready to introduce. Um, I just felt myself feeling like softer and more serious, (laughs) but it's still me. Um, I went to edit this week's podcast and I have a couple, couple recordings ready to go to you and they're amazing, but I felt like I wanted to record an episode that was kind of a quick, uh, I don't know, I was going to say quick and dirty, but I don't really know why. (laughs) I wanted to share a podcast episode that was some of my favorite quick tips for shifting and also for utilizing our feelings. I posted a um, Instagram post today and I ended it with the words, feelings don't define you, they guide you. And I think that that is a lot of, of my work with clients and a lot of my voice in the world is just to, to keep spreading the message that there are no bad feelings. There are no feelings that define us as anything other than human, right? If we are human, we are intended to experience the full range of human emotion. And there are certain feelings that become very common when we're talking about abortion, when I'm in conversation with people who have had abortions, um, and they, they just show up over and over again. They're pretty predict- predictable. I mean, there's the obvious grief, there's shame, there's fear, there's guilt. And they all have variable sources, um, but they're all just human feelings. And so I thought, kind of wanted to record an episode with just some of my favorite quick tips for each feeling. So many of us have these sort of key feelings that sneak in and some of us us are able to move through them, allow them easier than others. Um, Or in one abortion in our life, it feels more manageable and less disruptive. And then in another abortion in our life, it feels less manageable and more disruptive. So there's those initial kind of harder or maybe someone would define as more negative feelings, then there's this place in the middle that's sort of a little more neutral, not necessarily um, negative or positive, but this place in the middle that we kind of arrive at where we're thinking less about our abortion or we're thinking about it with more curiosity than we necessarily are judgment. And then there's this other curve we move to, some of us move to, that feels more like purpose and growth. So I want to kind of move through mostly the more defined negative or harder to process feelings and then and then continue through just a couple of the like less lower vibration feeling. I think most of us who have abortion, whether we feel really empowered and good about our decision or not, have some kind of grief. Um, I hesitated. You probably heard me hesitate as I started to say that because I said most of, but then I was like, is that really true? I don't, what do I know? I think a lot of us experience grief. And one of the reasons we struggle so much to process that grief, to allow that grief, to grow through or past that grief, is that 
we don't take the time to say this one like super, super simple sentence, which is just, I experienced a loss of, and then fill in the blank, right? So if you, then maybe should have said at the beginning of the episode, if you have a pen and paper, you might want to write down some of these favorite quick tips for, for understanding and utilizing our feelings um, and for shifting them. But I think grief is one of those feelings that can feel overwhelming when we're not acknowledging what we experienced a loss of. So for some people that will be, I experienced a loss of a child, of a baby, of a pregnancy, um, of my identity, of who I thought I was, of a relationship, of a belief system, of a community. So to fill in that sentence and just acknowledge I experienced a loss of fill in the blank and just sit with that and allow it can be so healing for processing grief. Okay. That's it on grief. This is what I mean by like quick tips for shifting, understanding, working with, exploring. Uh, Another really common one is shame. And this one I actually wrote about today on Instagram too, maybe even in my newsletter. Um, If you're not following me on Instagram or in my newsletter mailing list, highly recommend jumping in both those places. A lot of the content that I process and share ends up in Instagram in particular. And then um, I use the weekly mailing list to share other ideas or just connect everybody to resources. Um, So definitely explore those. But what I talked about today on Instagram in a couple of places was shame because I was getting coached today personally. um, And it was around some money beliefs. If you've listened to the podcast, you know, I have some some money belief stuff that I just tend to keep circling back around and working through. And I found myself experiencing a lot of shame and the coach I was working with, shout out to Sean, said, how would you, what would you say to your client if they were experiencing shame, right? Because Clearly, shame is an emotion that I coach a lot of people around. I talk to a lot of people about their shame. And I thought, I actually resisted the question at first because I I don't know. I guess I didn't want to answer it. So just know that that can happen too, is that we resist the exploration um, for whatever reason. And that's okay. (laughs) But as soon as I let myself answer the question, I thought to myself, of course, I've exp- of course I'm feeling shame. I was raised in a world that doesn't value, like doesn't place a monetary value on peace and freedom and relief. And so as I earn more money offering that, as a result to people, right? Like we do the work together and you experience more peace, more freedom, an immense amount of relief. Um, my work places a value on that. And I was experiencing shame around how can you put a value on that? It's, it's a human experience. And of course, my, I was feeling this, this way. So I was feeling this shame. And when I allowed myself to say, of course, I'm feeling shame because our society values, we accept that an iPhone costs a thousand dollars because it brings us access. It brings us joy. It brings us 
connection. It brings us dopamine hits. <laughs> it brings us pleasure. All these other things that our society has put a monetary value on. Um, there's so many things that we have defined as valuable and peace and freedom and relief and um, acceptance and gratitude and calm and contentment are not things we have placed monetary value on traditionally. So just those two words for me this morning, of course I'm experiencing shame were such a relief. And I find those two words to be such a relief to my clients, right? Of course, I'm experiencing shame after my abortions. I was raised Catholic, or of course I'm experienced, experiencing shame around my abortions. Um, my, I was taught that sex before marriage was immoral. Of course, I'm experiencing shame around abortion. I grew up driving past a Planned Parenthood with protesters and signage or a billboard. So to identify the quick tip, nothing's quick with me, right? There's always a long story. The quick tip is when you're experiencing shame, offer yourself those two words. Of course, fill in the blank and just notice what shifts for me. Um, I, this morning when I had that shift myself, I had, I had the shame, but then on top of the shame, I had judgment of myself for having shame. And so the two words, of course, allowed me to release that judgment and just let the shame be there. Like it didn't disappear, but it's like, oh, of course I'm feeling this way. That makes sense. So you can explore that. Another one is guilt. Um, this is more common with people who have been raised in a particularly religious community or family um, or have um, perhaps a partner with a different belief system than they do um, or they have a particular attachment to motherhood or what it means to be human and they can experience some guilt you can imagine it's pretty common um, around abortion so my quick tip around guilt is to ask yourself the question is this mine or someone else's that question can help us understand is what I'm feeling actually mine or is it coming from a story I've adopted that belongs to someone else? So um, again, the Catholic church seems to be of the more common pro-life agenda. So I, I know perfectly amazing and liberal Catholics Check out Catholics by choice, um, should you choose to. But I know many personally as well. But I am going to just refer back to that as a, as a super commonplace people experience guilt. So um, sometimes if we answer that question, is this mine or someone else's, it's actually not even coming from God or the Bible. It's coming from the Catholic Church. It's coming from a particular priest. It's coming from a particular congregation. So asking, is this mine or someone else's? And then hearing the answer like, oh, this belongs to that priest who was, I don't know the language here, but like maybe in position when I was in middle school. And I remember hearing them lecture about abortion. Or, I don't even know if lecture is the right word either. See how? <laughs> religiously clueless I am um when you when you identify this is actually coming from that place you can then redirect like do I want to keep that like I'm a grown adult now I 
am an independent thinker. I have my own body that I get to take care of and my own future that I get to take care of and protect. Does believing, does attaching myself to someone else's guilt story serve me? So it may even be like, is this mine or someone else's? And you remember sitting with your grandmother who you loved and her sharing what a sin abortion was and having a disconnect between, I love grandma, but I'm feeling this story she shared with me and the guilt I'm feeling is all wrapped up and intertwined with that, with my love for her and just noticing where are these things coming from? And then as an adult, right, as a free thinker, as someone who's even listening to this podcast and curious about how to heal, letting yourself unwind the stories and separate. Who am I? Who is she? What is love? What's my next step? Um, Another interesting one that comes up a lot is regret. And I say interesting because... Um, I think we have a tendency to believe that regret is a problem. And so the question, the quick tip I would encourage you to explore is, why is this a problem? If a regret is just something we have, it's only a problem if we make it a problem. So why is this a problem? A lot of times, we don't answer the simplest of questions. And that question will give you, right? If we come back to feelings don't define us, they guide us. Understanding why this regret feels like a problem helps, it is our guide, right? The answer to that question, why is this a problem, is our guide. And then we get to explore whatever that problem is and what we wanna do with it. I think some of us get confused that we're not supposed to have regrets. But if you've ever met a human being without regret, you probably have met a human being who hasn't taken many risks in their life, who's been playing it safe and small and hasn't gone after a lot of dreams. (laughs) Um, Regret doesn't have to be a problem. Um, It It can just be something that exists. So um, that's my question for you around regret regret is why is this a problem? Uh, Another one is fear, right? Just general fear. I think we have fear around judgment, right? Will other people judge me? Um, We have fear around what does this mean? There's a lot of layers of fear, but usually they're well, is it usually or always, they um, are attached to something in the future, right? I have a fear that if I, X will happen, or if I learn that, X will happen, or if someone else learns that, X will happen. And so our fear is really always attached to what we think will happen in the future. And what we think will happen is always representative of what we're fearing to feel, right? Like if my sister finds out and is upset or disappointed in me, I will feel sad. And so our fear is always of some feeling that we will have if that thing happens. So I think an underestimated tool around fear is to allow ourselves to go to the worst case scenario. If my sister finds out or if I tell her and she doesn't support me, the worst case scenario is that she never talks to me again. Or if I confide in my community, they will abandon me. Or um, fear of if I never get pregnant again. Or if someday I have a child who needs an abortion. Whatever the fear is, to gently, tenderly, lovingly let yourself go all the way to the worst case scenario 
and ask yourself this question, how would I show up? And that's it, you know, we don't let ourselves go all the way to that place to prove to our brain that like, yes, it might be sad. It might hurt. It might feel like rejection. And then this is who I am. This is what I would do. So reminding your brain that yes, there is fear and I'm also capable. I also have resources. I like, I can handle it. I might not like it, but I'm not going to die. I'm not going to disappear. Um, my fear is bigger than the reality of how I would show up should I land in that place. Um, so those are sort of like the basic, I don't think I missed any of sort of the core lower vibration, more negative feelings. And then we move into this place of using and recognizing feelings like this one, like acceptance. When we land there and want to stay there, or we are making that gentle shift to there, a quick tip to experience more of a feeling of acceptance would be, two of my favorite words are abortion happens. Or in three words, this is happening. Can also look like abortion is a part of the human experience. Or humans have abortions. And therefore I am human. I am allowed <laughs> to be having this experience. It's finding ways to accept, and that doesn't mean applaud, that doesn't mean condone, sorry, that doesn't mean um, jump for joy, that it's your reality, but to come to a place of acceptance where you can just take a breath without all the weight of something like guilt or shame. So abortion happens, or this is happening, or abortion is a part of the human experience. Another one that can help in terms of acceptance is um, maybe something like, I had an abortion and that's okay, or I've had four abortions and that's okay. Humans have abortions and that's okay. As you're stepping into words like this, it, your brain might argue with you. <laughs> it might not like these words and come up with, no, it's not, or it's not okay, kind of argue back with you. But if you keep repeating, if you keep trying on those words and that's okay enough, your brain is like a computer and it will scan for how it's okay. It will look for proof that it's okay if you tell yourself those words enough. And so those, those things can help keep you or get you to a place of acceptance. I think once we've landed at acceptance, all intertwined with it, sort of in the middle place of our our processing journey, our healing journey, we land in a different version of acceptance, which is kind of like curiosity. We start to get inquisitive. And so some quick tips for landing in or staying in that place are to use the words, it's possible that. So it's possible that my mother won't abandon me. It's possible that I will have future, uh, future family. It's possible that this was the right decision. It's possible that I can experience joy again. And, and these words stir up curiosity 
because again, they ask your brain to scan for evidence that it is possible. You might even find yourself thinking, well, it's not likely, but it's possible. That's enough. Sometimes that's enough to just keep you in a place that's more forward focused, more present focused, more accepting. Once you have accepted that more is possible than you had previously imagined, you can up the game by asking, how might this be happening? Sorry, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have had the dog in here. Um, how might this be happening for me? That really will ask your brain to take it up a notch. So in my case, I asked myself when I had my abortion, how might this be happening for me? And my brain found answers like, you get to be a voice. Now you get to be a voice. Now you know what it feels like. You are learning to have your own back. Maybe you can write a book that can help other people. So how might this be happening for me? Maybe it's, um, it showed me what my relationship really looked like. It showed me how I wanna behave in the future. It taught me to slow down. It challenged me to love myself. It getting to this place of deep curiosity and understanding and contemplating how might this be happening for me can be very powerful. From there, we can move into a place of purpose. And a place of purpose, a question that can keep redirecting us to purpose and leading us with purpose, is to just simply keep asking, who am I? Who you are is your purpose. <laughs> Showing up as all of you, as your best version of yourself is your purpose. It doesn't have to like fit in a pretty little mission statement or change the world dramatically. Your purpose is to be you. And so the more you investigate and ask, who am I? Not who does the world tell me I am, but who am I? The more you will step into your purpose, which is being the fullest, most expressive, most fully feeling version of you. And my favorite word, the word I lean into and move with the most in my life, what I call my why word, some of you have done a why word workshop with me, um, is growth. And this next question to lean us into and keep us in a state of growth is how do I want to show up? So who am I shows us our purpose. How do I want to show up shows us how to grow, how to expand, how to become more open. Again, growth for me is a favorite place to reside, and it might not be for you, but I think all of us can benefit by continuing to ask the question, how do I want to show up? So if there were three questions to move through all of, all of this, um, it would be, what am I feeling? Who am I? How do I want to show up? Um, I will put some of these very shortened <laughs> quick tips in the show notes so you can feel free to go look at them. Um, but I hope this episode was useful. I know it would have been so useful for me when I had just had my abortion. Sometimes we just need the quickest, easiest piece of information or perspective shift to grab onto and 
change the way we show up to our experience and to who we who we are and to who we want to be. So um, please feel free to practice these. Try one on until it feels really good and then try the next one on. And you are most certainly guaranteed to process and grow and move through your abortion experiences in a really powerful way. I um, do have space in my calendar. I'm recording now in March of 2022. March is my birthday month. It is my abortion anniversary month. Um, it is becoming spring in New England. <laughs> So I don't know, I know that this podcast gets listened to many times over, but if you are listening now, I do have space in my calendar for one-on-one -on -one clients. I also have a new program or a new package on my website that's a self-paced healing journey. So you can watch a series of, I think it's eight videos to explore more how to heal and grow into and with your abortion story. And then that comes with one one-on-one -on -one session with me. So if you've been listening to the podcast for a long time, or if you're just finding the podcast, I really encourage you to take that next step and invest in applying these concepts specifically to yourself in the brave, safe space of us working together and, uh, and growing so that you can live your best future. Thank you for another podcast week, and I'll come back next week with more guest interviews. Thanks for listening. And as always, please consider sharing, rating, and reviewing this podcast. It helps me reach a wider audience and invites more people to thrive after abortion. If you're someone who chose abortion and find yourself struggling, hiding, or wishing you could move beyond your experience, head over to my website and book a free call. We'll talk about how you can start living the life you made your choice for.